I learned Philippians 4, 6 in the Living Bible. I like the way it's translated. It says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank God for the answers. I like that. We are a congregation that cares for one another. There are times in the life of a congregation when you're not sure how to pray, aren't there? There are times when there are things that happen in the lives of our members that deeply affect all of us. That has happened this week, the, the life of Suzanne and Gary Keithley. Uh, Suzanne and Gary on Wednesday suffered the loss of a 16-year-old grandchild, was killed tragically in a car accident in St. Louis. There in St. Louis, uh, the visitation will be this evening and the funeral will be tomorrow morning. Please continue to lift them up in prayer. It's been a long month and a half. They also have a daughter that was just diagnosed with breast cancer and uh, had a surgical removal there. And um, they have some other family struggles that have been going on. And, you know, sometimes I, I know I'm tempted to pray, Lord, <laughs> no more, please. And uh, please uplift and, and uphold uh, the Keithley family. And there are others in our church that are suffering and others who have lost uh, parents and, and um, lost loved ones, and we want you to know that we are praying for you as a church family. We get that prayer list, and it is a long list every week, and uh, it takes some time to go through and to pray for each one of those concerns, and I encourage you to get that list uh, to keep it before you and remember to lift up the, the members of our church family. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Lord, we know that there is nothing that's too difficult for you. We don't even pretend to understand the whys of life, the hurts and the hurdles that we have to overcome. But we know that you're always good. You're always merciful. And Lord, we just trust you that you're going to be working in all things for our good. I pray for the Keithley family this morning. And Lord, I lift them up to you. I ask you to put your arms around them. Lord, let them sense the warmth of the church family, the prayers that are being prayed, and the intercession that's being made on their behalf. Show yourself strong in their lives, and Lord, we pray that you would pour out a measure of your grace. Not only the Keithley family, but the Bennett family, I pray for them this morning. I pray for other families who have suffered loss. Pray for those who are facing a diagnosis of illnesses and who have faced surgical procedures. and Lord, we just, we just uh, offer ourselves up to you this morning and ask that you would pour out your blessings upon this church. Bless our community and our world, Lord. There's so many tragic events that have taken place. And we pray that you would help us as Christians, Lord, to be about the business of peace and love and reconciliation. We don't understand the senseless violence and why anybody would want to hurt another person and take life. And, Lord, we pray for the people in Colorado and California and other parts of our country, even in our own city. And we ask, Lord, that you would help us to be instruments of your peace. Bless us now, Lord, as we wait upon you to share us a word from, from Scripture. And I pray that you would uh, touch our hearts, each one of us, in the name of Christ. Amen. At the close of the 20th century... There was a survey taken to determine the number one song of the century. And I still can't wrap my mind around this. I, I love music. I, I'm an eclectic music person. I, I love all kinds of music. I love country and western. <laughs> Just... <laughs> no, I, I, seriously, though, I, there, there's only like two forms of music that just drive me nuts. I can't, I can't take it. But other than that, I love, I mean, I love everything from Bach to rock to opera to, you know, classical. I love music. I, I, I'm not good at any of it, but I love it. I love music. So now, with all of the music that was produced in the 20th century, just the 20th century alone, all of the music that was produced in the 20th century, the number one song of the century, I cannot, I still can't wrap my mind around why this song was selected, but the number one song was by the Rolling Stones. And it was, I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> Number one song. Just think of all the great music. I mean, anyways, let me leave that alone. 
How strange that that should be the number one song. I think what that says, at least to me, is that the world is looking for answers. The world is searching for peace. The world is looking for contentment and rest and happiness. The words of Rodney King all echo, echo so often in our own minds, and, and we, we, we find ourselves saying and uttering those same words, don't we? When senseless tragedies take place, don't you say the Rodney King phrase? Can't we all just get along? Hatred and violence and bloodshed have become all too common. And I don't know the answer. But I do know this. Whether you're for gun control or against gun control, I'm not going to get in that. But here's what I do know. We can't keep doing what we're doing. Life is too precious and life is too sacred for us to accept our current trends as being normal. We can't keep going down the path that we're going down. Well, the good news for you and me and the challenge before us is that Christianity offers a message of love and hope and peace. Today, of course, we're focusing on peace. Peace is a gift from God. The message of the angels to the shepherds was this. I bring you great tidings. I bring you good news of great joy. To us today is born a Savior. The announcement was that there will be peace on earth. Peace is a gift of the Holy Spirit. And one of the evidences of a spirit-filled life. It is spiritual fruit. And this is one of the fruit that all Christians, all Christians, should produce in their lives. Galatians 5, 22, 23, if you want an exhaustive list. And there's nine of them. But one of those fruit is the fruit of peace. Isaiah 23, 6, 26, 3, excuse me, says it this way. God will keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed or steadfast or focused or fixed upon God. That's based on our trust in God. We trust God and we lean not on our own understanding or our own experiences. Things may get rough, things may get tough, things may get difficult, but we have a choice if we're going to believe and trust God or not. Our culture, our condition, and our circumstances do not determine our peace as Christians. Can I say that again? Our culture, our condition, nor our circumstances determine our peace. Our focus is on God and the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God is always faithful. Amen? The Bible says, and I have a, I have a sermon series called Seven Things That God Can't Do. I'm not going to preach that today. But one of the things that God cannot do, the Bible says that God cannot tell a lie. God cannot quit being God. God cannot ignore the promises of God. And God is loving, God is faithful, God is just, God is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and God's character is not going to change. That's what gives us a sense of peace, even in the midst of things that are in turmoil. Now, the person that wrote those words that we read from the book of Philippians this morning is the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was in prison when he wrote the letter to the church at Philippi. His own experiences with God was not that Christianity nor life was, was not a bed of roses. He was shipwrecked three times. He was beaten within an inch of his life on several occasions. He was almost stoned to death. He, 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 was, he was without. He said, I've learned to serve God when I didn't have a dime. I've learned to bless God when I've been wealthy. He, he did without. He was without a family, except for his church family. He suffered. Every city he went to, there was persecutions. And this is a man who had the nerve to write that we should rejoice in all things. Now, he did not say give thanks in everything. He didn't say give thanks for everything. He said give thanks in everything. Did you get that? Give thanks in everything, not for everything. There are some things that we don't have to be thankful for, amen? Amen. I'm not going to give you a list this morning, but there's a lot of things I'm not thankful for. 
I don't think you can be thankful for everything. I'm, I'm, I'm banned in my house from using this word, so I, my wife isn't here this service, and I know you won't tell her I used it. <laughs> but just because some idiot picks up a gun and decides to media out justice or express their frustrations or anger, we don't rejoice in that. We don't give thanks in everything. We give thanks, we give thanks in everything, but not for everything. Paul says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Take it to the Lord. Paul says that then the peace of God, which passes understanding. There is a peace, there is a calmness, there is a, a rest, an assurance that the believers can have even in a topsy-turvy world that's gone mad with sin and nuts with violence. We can have a peace. Why? Because first of all, we remember that God is in control. And secondly, we remember the promises of Christ. And we cling and we hope for the day when there will truly be peace on earth. And that day is going to come. Paul says the peace of God which passes understanding, that is a peace that there's no human explanation, will guard your heart and your mind. The peace of God is what helps us maintain sanity in an insane world. How can we keep going when chaos and confusion and challenge are all around? Well, God is in control. Jesus still reigns. I, I say that to myself some mornings when I get up. Jesus is still on the throne. And no matter what happens to me today, he's on the throne at the beginning of the day. And when I lay down my head, if, if God so allows me to do that, Jesus will still be seated on the throne. Amen? I'm reminded of Stephen who was being stoned to death. And in the midst of his rocky world, he was at peace. Because he could see into the heavenlies that he knew that he was seated with Christ in heavenly places. He knew that Jesus had opened a door that folks without him could not even see. He even blurted out as they were stoning him. He said, hey, look, everybody, I see Jesus, and he's standing at the right hand of God. One of my friends says Jesus stood up to welcome him home. Isaiah 53 says it this way. 53 verse 5 says, he was wounded, that is Jesus. This was a prophetic passage. Jesus hadn't even been born. It was centuries later that he would even come into the world. It says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. But his punishment brings us peace. It was on a hill far away that stood the old rugged cross, an emblem of suffering and shame, that he paid the price for you and me to be at peace. Colossians 1.20 echoes that same sentiment. It says, he bought my peace by offering himself on the cross. Peace is found in Jesus Christ and in Christ alone. And peace is possible because peace comes from Christ and is shared through the people of God. You want, us, you want the world to be different? You want things to change? Then be an instrument of peace. Be an instrument of peace. Well, there's something I want you to do with me this morning. We still do this once in a while. Would you pick up that red thing that says hymn book? And I want you to crack it open to page 431. Page 431. hymn book and, and pick up page 431 and if you're able would you stand and let's sing this song together let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me
hear this invitation. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and receive this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Would you join me in the confession and pardon? Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear this good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Well, as redeemed and forgiven people and as people of peace, would you share the peace of Christ with those worshiping around you this morning?